Hello and welcome to Emirates 24 7. We're coming direct from the second day of the World Future Energy Summit here in Abu Dhabi. A little later on the show, we'll be looking at the concept of vertical farming and one of China's largest renewable energy producers. But first, Ban Ki moon has outlined a plan for a doubling of renewable energy by 2030. But at current projections, we are likely to fall 9% short. Earlier, I caught up with the International Renewable Energy Agency to find out how that target is going and just what more needs to be done. Well, the thing is, of course, we're falling short in predictions if we would follow a business as usual scenario. So the basic message is that we just have to step up. And the good news is that we are seeing right now tremendous developments. You know, renewables are becoming increasingly more cost competitive. We've seen a dramatic drop in the prices of PV panels over the last two years. So, you know, they've dropped 60 percent. So that opens up, uh, you know, tremendous short term economic uh, opportunities. And I think more and more countries are embracing this. So it's absolutely doable. But we need to step up. I guess in terms of that stepping up, what, what specifically do you think needs to be done to, to meet that target? Well, one of the main drivers of development of, of energy in general is, is policy. And this is also an integral part of the agency's mandate. Is we work, IRENA works with uh, the, the countries that are signed up in having the best policies available, in learning from the mistakes and, uh, and, and also, of course, from the successes of, of other countries. Looking at an announcement you made this week regarding the Global Atlas, uh, which is out, of course, focusing on, on wind and solar power, uh, I guess what do you hope that this uh, is will bring to the market? Well, the Global Atlas is a, is a really cool product. It's, a, it's an online platform that enables countries to have a, a, a quick assessment of where the best location is to deploy renewables, so the most cost-effective uh, locations. And that is a great tool to attract investments because in, in the end, it's not the governments that are going to do all the investments. Most of the investments will actually come from the private sector. So if you, if you have this tool available, if you have that information available, it will attract investors and it will in the end reduce the cost. So I guess you're looking at solar and wind in particular at the moment. Are there any other energies that you're planning on focusing on? Of course. I mean, our mandate is to embrace all six main renewable energies. So we will start gradually. We've started with solar and wind, but we are looking right now at including bioenergy. Uh, we, will, we will eventually also work on geothermal. We will work on, on marine uh, and, and, and basically have everything. So it's work in progress. Fantastic. Looking at uh, the concept of nuclear energy, often it's put in the same category, in a similar category to renewables. What's IRENA's stance on this? So what are your thoughts on nuclear energy, obviously, in terms of the fact that, particularly here in the region, we're looking to invest more uh, in this regard? Well, the agency's mandate is to basically work and focus on the six uh, re types of renewable energy, and nuclear is just not part of, of what we do. There's other agencies that are working on that. Fair enough. Uh, looking at uh, something else with, with IRENA, um, China has just been uh, brought, is looking to, to obviously be part of the agency now, a member of the agency. Uh, considering that they are the largest uh, net producer of carbon emissions, uh, what's the significance of this? Why is it happening now? And I guess, how is that relationship going to work? Well, it's, it's a tremendous boost for the agency to have China on board because not only are they the largest in, in many things, I mean, it's just a, a massive country, uh, they're also the largest uh, deployer of renewable energies. I mean, the, the growth of, of the wind sector, of the solar sector, uh, of all renewable sectors in, uh, in, in China is tremendous. So they're leading and, and it's therefore of, of, of absolute importance to have them on board. They're already the largest manufacturer of solar panels. And, and through that position, they're also one of the main innovators. I mean, the, the main drivers behind reducing the cost, behind uh, increasing efficiency of, the, uh, of these technologies will come from the manufacturing industry also in China. So I guess looking directly at their relationship in terms of what IRENA specifically is offering to China and, and vice versa, how is that playing out? It's a mutually beneficial relationship. We will learn from how, uh, how China does things and, trans and transform that into other countries. In terms of policies, you know, they, they of course, also they have regional approaches, they have a national federal approach, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, tremendous activities in the building of solar cities, they're working on renewables in the built environment, so it's a mutually beneficial relationship. They can learn from how that has been done in other countries and vice versa, so it's a great, it's a great uh, achievement to have them on board. Fantastic. Again, I guess looking from Irina's perspective at the challenges we're still seeing, you know, especially uh, in terms of the discussions that have been uh, taking place here at the World Future Energy Summit. What are the greatest challenges? What are you focusing on for 2013? In 2013, um, we are focusing on basically broadening our scope to embrace all the new countries that we have on board. You know, for example, China, the moment they're a full member, of course we have to work with them. Uh, we have to uh, basically incorporate them in, in, our, in our working program. 
what we have done in the last few years, we've worked tremendous, uh, tremendously hard in Africa with all the African member states. We've uh, done many exciting things in helping them basically accelerate the deployment. We've also focused a lot on the small island development states because there is an immediate need. They, they are uh, basically uh, remote typically, so they pay a lot for everything, especially for energy, and they're well endowed with renewable energy. So there is a very short-term uh, uh, economic business case. Where we're focusing on this year is also looking at Latin America. Uh, there is tremendous opportunities, tremendous commitment there, and of course uh, the wider Asian, uh, Asian region. So basically we're covering the entire planet. Fantastic. And just finally then, specific plans for the Middle East in 2013? Of course. I mean, this is uh, the exciting uh, uh, movements that we're seeing here. I mean, Abu Dhabi is, of course, a front runner. Everybody is, uh, is engaged in UAE. Dubai is now coming up uh, in, a, in a very big way. Um, we, of course, are, are very excited about um, uh, what Saudi Arabia is doing, you know, apart from uh, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, everybody has a plan. But, but uh, in terms of, of, ma of, of magnitude, of scale, uh, we see, of course, a lot of uh, very exciting things happening in Saudi Arabia. Because what they're doing right now is basically burning diesel uh, for electricity, which is just expensive. So, you know, instead of burning it and make electricity and sell it at a subsidized price, keep it for later, use it for petrochemicals, or sell it on the market. So right now there is a, a very short-term business case to make to save money using solar energy on a very, very big scale. And this is where the numbers are from. I mean, it's more than $100 billion of economic investments in the power sector in Saudi Arabia. So that's very exciting.